It's mousetrap and see. Good afternoon, welcome to my home. Later in this video, we're gonna be going out, doing some scouting stuff. We had a lot of people asking questions lately about trail cameras and basically how we set them up in and around bedding areas. Later on, we're gonna go out to the field, but right now we got serious problem. Zach and I have got a bit of a mouse issue here in the home. Ted has got some ideas for how to catch these little buggers. This is my first try at it, so no promises. You want a butter knife? No. He's not. He's just gonna end up sitting right here and eating it. Probably should have just put it on that part. That would yeah, make sense. Keep it on the middle. So he's gotta go out there to get the goods. This is my office right here, and I heard one of the little savages crawling around back here behind this refrigerator. Ted's got his cans in here with a shoelace running through them from one side of that bucket to the other. Once that mouse gets up here and goes out onto them cans, he's gonna spin on them and just fall right in the bottom of the bucket. That's our live trap for him. And we're gonna put a trail camera right here on video mode so we can catch it. Works every time. I don't know if it's gonna work at all. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to work. We were just going to use cardboard itself, but the cardboard's too slick. So if we put this towel here, give them a little bit more grip so they can get a good run at it here. Get right into the goods. Just in case our live trap won't work, though, we uh, went ahead and got some traditional mouse traps over here. Ted's got them set up in this funnel right here in this corner. Yeah. Come over here. I'm going to need to show you this. See how you just put the peanut butter on there? Uh -huh. They'll just walk up to that thing and they'll just lick that peanut butter off. So you put a chip on top of it. And then when he's trying, he's got to get that chip off. And when he does, oh! Now reach in that bag and get you a little chip out. Little bitty tiny chip. My old buddy Pat McSherry showed me this trick, trick years ago. Just take that. Take that chip and break off a little piece of it. There you go. About like that. And then you put that on top of the peanut butter so he can't lick the peanut butter off. He's got to take that chip off. We got to get out of here. We're going to set up a camera though over that thing. We'll let you know how uh, mission mouse eradication goes here. We're going to the woods. Quick tip for you, if you're setting up a bunch of trail cameras, don't wait until the day that you go out to set them out to buy batteries. Because then you end up at one of these dollar joints where you're paying 12 bucks for 16 batteries. Just go to Costco and buy 4,000 of them for $8 or something and it's just a far better solution. But here you go, Ted. Here you, here's your batteries. Oh, yeah. Should be rabbit hunting in here. They're in here thick. All right guys, Ted and I are getting ready to head out and do some scouting in the snow today. I wanna to talk to you some about our trail camera strategy because this particular spot that we're headed into, we only hunted, what, once last fall? Mm, yeah, I think just once. One time and Ted and I put up a camera in there over a scrape because this is an area that we don't spend a lot of time in. Haven't really scouted it much in the past. And that's kind of what we do. That's how we utilize cameras a lot of times is we put them up in one of these public areas that we don't plan on hunting, then we check them at the end of the year. Well, ended up checking that thing, had a couple of big slambinos on there, both of them, good ones. We're gonna go down in there to where we had that camera set up. It was over a scrape most of the fall, and I think we only got a couple of videos of these bucks throughout the fall. They were all at night. Just didn't see a ton of sign in the immediate area surrounding the camera so when we go in there today we're going to backtrack off of that point and head up into some of these other bedding areas there's a bunch of these ridges that run down through here i mean there's several thousand acres of public in this general vicinity and like i say we ain't scouted this before but with this fresh snow that we just had a few days ago we ought to be able to pick up on some fresh tracks see any old rubs from last fall just to try to learn a little bit more about the area come on ted that's a good size track right there. See that? Coming straight out of that bedding. Actually a bed right there in the snow. Look at this. Oh, yeah. See that blood? 
What do you think that's from? I have no idea. More right there. Yeah. No, that's that's on its foot. Yeah, and there's more up here. Going up into all these heavy cedars and stuff. They love bedding in these cedars, especially in cold winter weather like this. Keeps them out of the wind. It's that good thermal cover. Let's keep on going. That's interesting, though. Yeah. See this lick? Y'all can hear the cars driving by us on the road out here. Road's only 100 yards away. Come in here and look at this rub, though. Show them that, Ted. Looks like a pretty fresh one, too. Another lick broke right here. Another rub over there. Holy cow, look at this thing, dude. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'd say that's the man in charge, don't you, Ted? Yeah, I'd say. Look at the back side of this one right here. See, this is interesting. Got a rub coming from that way. Got a rub going too. See that? Yep. While we were down there at that scouting workshop in Mississippi a couple weeks ago, one of the most frequently asked questions that we were getting from you guys was, where do you put the camera? Where do you put a trail camera? We were going in there finding bedding areas and then that was what everybody wanted to know is they would ask like, do you put a camera in the bedding area? Do you put a camera on the edge of the bedding area? And if you've been watching us the last few years, you notice we don't use a ton of cameras during hunting season. We either put them in locations where they're really easy to check. We can just pull up there, look at one real quick and get out of there without putting too much pressure on the bedding. Or we put them in the center of the bedding area and we just leave them soak all fall and then come back in and learn a ton about what the deer were doing. I mean, that's essentially what Ted and I did in this spot from these trail camera videos. We had it on a scrape down there right up against a bedding area and we just left it soak there all fall. Now we know it's definitely an area of interest because of the intel that we got from the camera. So we're coming and trying to scout like I mentioned before. But this spot right here is a great example of a spot that we would use a camera. You got the road right there. You could pull up. One of your buddies could just let you off and you could run a camera right here in this little travel route where these rubs are at, where these deer are crossing that road. And it's real easy for you to check. You got bedding right here behind us. There's does bedded on the back side of that. And we've already been looking along that transition back there at places that we could potentially set up. But this is a spot where we would put a camera and then check it every few weeks throughout the fall because it's not in the bedding area itself. They're gonna be used to cars driving up and down that road. All you'd have to do is hop out real quick, run over here, pull your card, check it, and then get out. And you're not intruding into the bedding. And then if you get pictures of a buck that's either going in or coming out of that bedding area, then you know he's in there and you can then go about hunting it. Ah, it's that deer with that bloody foot. Is it? Yeah, look here. Oh yeah. See that? Blood's still wet. We just bumped it out of that bedding area. Now this is super interesting guys. Check this out. Y'all probably can't see it, but Ted and I were just over on that far ridge scouting those cedars and stuff. And we cut a buck track, what I'm assuming is a buck, because it's a pretty good sized track. We cut a buck track with some blood in the track print, like where his leg got cut or something. And it was actually going up into that first bedding area that we checked. And I think we bumped that deer out of there because we came over here about 200 yards away and we cut that same track, running track, coming out because he's got some blood in the track over here. Right by your right foot here, Ted. Look here on the log. See that? He actually came up here, and because of the snow, we can really see this. He came up here, stopped on top of this ridge, then turned, obviously turned around, looked back the way that he just got bumped out of, and then he turns and he goes back down into that bottom. That's pretty typical of a deer though when you spook it out of a bedding area. 
Especially yeah. like that. That's a soft bump, you know. I mean, kind of like that coos deer that you saw. Yeah. Yep. You remember how he took open. off running and then he stopped and he started looking back? Yeah. Like that's what happened. We spooked that deer somehow out of that bedding area and it it was threatened enough to run 250 yards or so over here onto this next ridge, but then it turned around and watched behind it and then took a different route down and in there. So that's interesting how they escape those things like that and how you can see it in the snow. It's pretty sweet. A lot of tracks. Not a perfect tree in here for the trail camera. That one would be perfect. That one would? Yeah, but it'll never go around it. It's huge. If you guys want to see all the cameras and the gear stuff we use for cameras you can look down in the description below i'll list it all down there for this video but we found a pretty good little trail crossing right here bedding area behind us bedding area over there these stupid glasses are fogging up yeah they're pretty stupid i'm gonna put this camera up on video mode probably 10 feet or so up in this tree i'm just gonna use this climbing stick and then take the climbing stick with us and use a python lock for the camera and I'm gonna point it down at that trail crossing right there this is another one of those spots real close to the road so we can get in here and check it pretty easy here in the next couple weeks I'm gonna climb up there and get it set up I know it's a dead tree little work <laughs> for a trail camera yep This is pretty cool right here. These deer, especially in the winter, love eating locust pods. You can see all the tracks right in here and the poop and stuff. They've just been pawned down underneath, feeding on these locust pods underneath of this locust tree. All right, we've done a lot of scouting. We set up a couple cameras and now we're looking at these bedding areas that I was talking about earlier. We actually scouted one of these on our way in where we saw a bunch of those big rubs but this is another location and right here where we're standing is a little cedar thicket that's approximately five six hundred yards away from where ted and i ran that camera last fall where we got videos of those slambinos you know but think big picture here as far as us learning the area the first step was coming in here putting up the camera letting it soak all year second step was checking it finding out that there's mature bucks in the area None of them were on daylight in the camera, so we knew that we had to expand our range out a little bit to try to find their bedding. And I'm pretty sure that's what we found right here. I can see a rub up there, rub right there. Come over here, look at this big rub, Ted. This thing's been worked for several years, you know, and then there's another older rub right past it, about five, six feet back there. And if you turn around here, you see this was rubbed not last year but the year before this was rubbed a couple years ago and then there's another fresh one right past it and now if you come over here you can kind of see what that deer is looking at down through there as he's bedded up in these cedars he can see that opposite ridge he can see down here along the edge of the ditch where ted and i actually just walked up i would anticipate that at least one of the bucks that we got on camera last fall was using this area pretty regular so now we're going to exit the bedding area we're going to take the trails headed back out towards our access and we're going to look for potential spots to set up and maybe spots to hang a camera for next fall what do you think that is in there big old buck bed probably i'd say you're right there's an old rub in there, fresh one right here at the front of it. Why else would that rub be there? You know, the trail's out here 15 yards away. Laying in there amongst all that brush, staring down here. He's got you pinned. Starting to find a pretty good looking spot right here. You can see the cedar thicket right over here behind us. See it through there, Ted, about 40, 50 yards. Mm -hmm. There's a little rise off this ridge that drops into that cedar thicket. Like right now where I'm standing, if a deer was bedded in that cedar, he can't see us. The last bed we found is probably 80 yards, but we got a lot of thick brush in between us and them. So if we came from our access this direction, 
which is where we had that camera last fall. We had that camera, you know, several hundred yards down in the bottom. If we came from that direction up here, we're shielded from most of that bedding and we can pop up into any one of these trees and shoot the transition. We followed those trails right out of that, that bedding area that we were just into and they lead right up here. So this would be a really good spot to set up with a wind coming out of the bedding. But in this particular situation, I don't think I would run a camera in here. And a lot of folks ask that, like, where do you put the cameras? Do you put it in the bedding area? And occasionally we will, but since I'm most likely gonna be hunting this spot next fall, I don't wanna have to come back in here and get a camera. The only time we'll put cameras in the bedding is if we can do it in the middle of the summer and we can leave them in there all fall where we don't go in and mess with them. In this situation, I'd probably put a camera right back there where we had it last fall, Ted. Remember where we had it on those scrapes? Yeah. And then if we get video or pictures of bucks at night down there, we know there's a good chance that they're bedded up in here. That keeps the camera four or 500 yards away from the bedding in a safe location where you can check it regularly, but still in a spot that the bucks are using regularly. They're just using it at night. Keep your scent out of here, out of the spot that you wanna hunt. And then when conditions are right, you can come up this ridge, be shielded from the bedding and pop up in one of these trees. Let's look at this tree up here. This would be a good one right here. That shag bark, you could get up in that center trunk there and blend in real well, right on the top of this ridge. Or you could get in this one here, potentially. This would be a good one. A lot of cover in it. And we still, we're right on the transition. There's actually a nice little bowl right here in front of us where you could shoot to and be a good 15, 20 yard shot. I can see some rubs right there along the transition of the cedars. Got a trail right here. Another trail I can see in the snow just over the lip. Buck beds 80 to 100 yards that direction. And you can see how thick all that is back there. I mean, they're gonna have a hard time seeing you if you're coming from this direction. There's actually a little ditch over there you could come up and see most folks that are accessing this area are coming from that way and those bucks are set up to intercept them before they come in here because the road's not very far over there. However, we'd have to take a huge loop all the way around to come in here and hunt the bedding that's right next to the road. Just because it's right next to the road doesn't mean it's gonna be an easy spot to hunt. We still gotta go way around to access a different way than what everybody else is doing. This would be a good spot. I'm gonna mark these trees on OnX. Be ready to go in here next fall. Let's head to the ranch, what do you say? Yep, fingers are getting cold. Fingers are cold. Thanks for watching guys. If y'all haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned because we're gonna be headed out for a turkey tour real, real soon.